Hey Random Stranger, we have got another episode of Land of the Lustrous lined up and things are really starting to heat up. Before reacting, I want to quickly put out a new theory out there. So in the last episode, something weird happened. Just before Sensei wipes out the Lunarians, he says the words, how sad. So new theory, maybe he's actually empathetic with the Lunarians because he knows that they are souls untethered from their full humanity. He also knows, however, that they haven't evolved to the point where they deserve to be restored to being fully human again. So going back to the conversation between King and Foss, it seems as though the flesh or the admirabilis and the bones or the gems have both overcome somehow the weaknesses that plague humans. Um, in other words, their propensity for cruelty and, you know, their obsession with destruction. So maybe Sensei is working on a solution, but at the moment just has to stop the Lunarians from destroying the joint, basically. The other big thing that happened last episode was that Foss froze in their first real battle. They've got the new agate legs, but they still have so much to learn about, uh, I guess, being able to act in the moment and, and being able to defend their family when, you know, shit hits the fan and the Lunarians are hellbent on taking them away. Uh, it's, it's like one thing to fantasize about being a hero. It's another to actually be in the midst of war and experiencing the terribleness of it. And Amethyst, I didn't say it in the last video, but I loved them. I love how they can merge into one form and and how carefree and chill they are. I really, really hope they're okay and that we see them again in this episode. To the Lunarians, shame on you because you just don't hurt precious babies who just want to chase butterflies around and save stranded jellyfish. Like, you just don't. All right, let's get into this episode and pray that Foss is going to be happy in it. In three, two, one, play. God, we have to watch this again. Yeah, their scream was was awful. Badass bought. See, yeah, like, what's sad? Why is it sad? Someday Bort is going to give Foss a hug. Okay, well at least they were able to put Amethyst back together. That braid's really cute. But I bet none of them have ever been like just crushed like that with the with the gem clamp. Ah, oh, she's doing the cow tail thing. Oh, and they're saying sorry to her, to them. Okay, so they're the um, researcher, I'm guessing, the Lunarian uh, expert. Sapphire. That's, that's the awful thing is you're basically being destroyed by bits of your friend, like someone that you used to know. Okay, it doesn't look like we're going to get happy for this episode either. Oh, we haven't seen Cinnabar for a while. Just go say hi. Why are you hiding? <laughs> Don't be a stalker.
Oh, man. So we've got Sad Foss and Sad Cinnabar now. <laughs> it seems like Foss is just um, slowly losing hope that sh they can ever help Cinnabar. Like, they can't even help themselves. And so how can you help someone else discover their purpose? I just want them both to be happy. Is that really so much to ask? When the world named for the evening rain is peeled away. Hmm. Oh, we get to see them hibernate. What do they do? Just sleep in a cave? A tent? Oh, Daya is like dressed in this, uh, I don't know what that is, but it's cute. <laughs> you got to look good if you're going into hibernation. Oh, Foss. <laughs> oh, Retail, that was nice. See, they're just avoiding Cinnabar completely now. That was not the plan, Foss. <laughs> um, they're a different, different person now. And sunny days. Ugh. Okay, so they definitely don't live in Australia because even in winter we've got quite a lot of sunny days. Oh, who's this? Antarctica. Oh, whoa. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? Oh, they are so adorable. They're so soft looking compared to the, like, the black uniforms that they normally wear. Okay, I have to look that up, that photo of Bot's hair again. Because they looked so different. Yeah. And the little bow in their hair. Is that, yeah, that's Antarctica. Oh, very. Oh, wow. Oh, I love their look. They seem like very. I guess, militant? Yeah, 
Yeah, I was gonna say they every winter they they wake up, I guess, and no one else is awake. Oh, <laughs> that's what she lives for. Just that hug every winter. Hey, some company is pretty good. <laughs> so even Antarctica. Foss is infamous. Yeah, that, that is so interesting how Antarctica is less hard than Foss um, and how it's, it's the weather that changes her toughness. I love that there's all these uh, factors in calculating the gem's strength. Okay, so they're still trying to find something that they can be good at. Or at least not be a complete failure at. Maybe they have to clear the snow. It is tough waiting in snow. Come on, Foss, seize those legs. <laughs> Their weapon looks massive, like compared to Foss's little stick. Mm. It's good advice for life as well. That <laughs> Foss. Just plowing through. It's one way to do it. Oh, is that a ship? Ice flow. Wait, so... The gems were also microorganisms that grew from the bottom of the sea, right? So are those like, in a sense, stillborn gems? Gems that just didn't make it to the surface? Oh, Lunarians. Like winter lunarians. Oh, Foss, are you gonna break? Don't break. Or maybe just icebergs crushing together. 
because they do make these crazy noises. And that is just seven. What's with this jazzy music in the background? Oh, they're on sleep duty. <laughs> oh, nice. And the violin. Damn, they are awesome. Oh, that music, that music was pure exhilaration. Love it. <laughs> this wonderful work of yours. Mm, I hope that's not foreshadowing. <laughs> mm. Okay, so maybe Foss hasn't been pushing as much as they can. Or maybe they just got to give up preconceived notions of what they can do. Come on, Foss. Oh. Is this like a training montage? That's right, Rutil. So the so Antarctica has Antarcticite has to do all of their tasks as well, including Rutil's. Sleepwalking for it? <laughs> Is that amethyst? No. Oh. I don't know if it works, but just cover them with sheets. This family is insane. <laughs> I love how she just jumps from like peak to peak. Oh, their movements are so smooth. Man, this like slapping double bass, this is perfection. Wow. <gasps> what? That was the snail. Like king. Oh. 
Oh, they're living things. And Foss can understand. Yeah, Foss can understand because they were able to communicate with King as well. Yeah, communication. Oh, it could work. Just let them try. Hmm. Oh. They reflect your worst fears back onto you. That's not really their own independent thought. Oh, don't, don't break your... No. I know I said that that would be good, but I don't want to watch this. She's not going to do it. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> no, there's no shell. Oh, this is like their subconscious. Oh, that's the devil. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, so that's, I think it's definitely uh, Foss's subconscious sort of being reflected back in the, in the ice flows. Because Cinnabar is the person who they're most concerned about. Oh, God. Foreshadowing, guys. I hate it. It's so... Something did bite their arms off. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Oh man. Uh wow. I I think I'm going to look back on this episode and count it amongst one of my favorites because I know we still have a few more to go, but there was just so many things about this one in particular that I loved. For one, we get to see the gems go into hibernation, and I loved seeing all of them dress up in their individually designed white robes. It looked almost um, ceremonial, and I wonder if there's a more significant meaning to the clothes that they were wearing. So I know white in East Asian culture is a color that symbolizes a death or like a a passing into the spirit world, which is why you never ever wear hair white to an Asian wedding because it's what you normally wear to a traditional funeral. 
So death for humans often acts as a milestone, um, depending on your belief in an afterlife or not. Uh, at the very least, the death of someone else is often a turning point in people's lives. So for a gem, while they may have no concept of death, the white robes potentially might symbolize uh, the marking of a milestone or like the passing of a season literally in their very, very long lives. So I see it as they go into hibernation, which is a kind of a symbolic death, uh, and then reemerge into the next season of their lives. And as has been mentioned uh, in the show in the past, death gives meaning to life. And for immortals in the absence of death, I guess this is sort of a way for them to acknowledge that symbolically. I could be completely speaking out of my ass here, but the fact that the show is even making me think these things is just um, pretty cool. Okay, just to take it down a notch to a really superficial note, seeing Bort dressed up in those white rows with their hair all buffed up uh, completely changed my outlook on their character. I know some of you love Bort and it seems like the anime because it's a shorter form of the story as compared to the manga. Maybe it's cut out certain bits of Bort's uh, character development that I'm not necessarily seeing in the show. So I am hoping in future episodes that we'll get more of Bort uh, because I'm now totally primed based on how soft they looked in this episode for, I guess, a future reveal of Bort's more compassionate soft side. Daya as well, giving Bort a run for their money on the hibernation cuteness scale. I would totally watch a spin-off of those two if there ever was one. And I guess I'm just wondering, do the mangas explore their relationship in more detail uh, compared to the series? Yeah, if you know that, please let me know. Next, we have Antarctica, who was badass with a capital B. Uh, the fact that they exist in liquefied form for most of the year and then only crystallize when winter sets in was a really cool twist on the hardness scale that the gems go by. I loved, loved watching them make really quick work of the ice flows with that insane technique where they like stab the tip of the ice low with their high heel and then use their massive weapon. I think it was a glaze of some type, They're just cracking it wide open. And uh, yeah, just everything about them was so cool, including their look and just how they initially refused to work with us, but then eventually took them under uh, their wing and, and it was really kind in how they trained Foss. Oh, there's also that part where they just lived for Sensei's hug and that was a real juxtaposition with how um, cool and badass they were. So all of that was just perfection. Onto the ice flows, we were given a bit more lore that I found fascinating. So Antarctica, who was quoting Sensei, interestingly enough, says that they are microorganisms from the sea who have frozen over. And like the gems themselves, who also evolved from these microorganisms, these ice flows seem to have retained a sort of like echo-like ability to speak. Although um, Sensei is very quick to point out that these aren't actually independent thoughts. The ice flows simply reflect your anxieties back onto you and it like potentially drives you mad. Sort of like a, a mirror of Erised type situation from Harry Potter, but with bad thoughts. At the end, when Foss hears that voice speaking to her, uh, it was definitely reflecting uh, Foss's innermost anxieties, I think, because it was saying things like, you're running out of time to save Cinnabar, uh, isn't that worth losing more of your limbs? Things that I think Foss is really struggling with internally. It just goes to show how much that promise she made to Cinnabar has really sunk deep into her soul. I do find it a bit strange that Sensei refers to these ice flows as sinners. That's not a very complimentary term. The phrase that came to my mind first was uh, sins of the flesh which one suggests weakness and kind of like a, a lack of discipline, but also that the ice flows are somehow related to or maybe even are uh, previous admirabilists who, as you all know, are the flesh 
Whoa, that was a lot. I apologize for rambling more than I usually do. If, however, you think I've missed something in my initial thoughts, uh, and I probably have, please do let me know in the comments below and I will try to get to it in my next video. Until then, thank you for watching and I will see you all for episode 8.